I'm Jay. Nice to meet you. Hi, Jay. I'm Paulie. So good to see you. How's it going? It's good. I must say, I've actually seen you like perform before, and I'm a huge fan. Um, I've I've gone to Love on Tour like a million times at this point. Oh. I literally wrote an article called my residency at Harry's house because like <laughs> I went to so many of the residency shows that it like was a problem. <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, oh. What are your highlights? What are your favorite shows? Um, I loved, oh, God, I really wanted to make it to the final show, but I couldn't. I went to six of the mm. residency shows. We were in the pit. He was wearing like polka dots and sparkles and stuff, of course. Classic. Sounds and. <laughs> and um I was on your side of the stage though hell yeah that's the best so, side oh it was the best side during daylight like when we're all rocking out together that was the best time it's gorgeous <laughs> so yeah I was I just had to start off I was like guys I'm talking to Polly today so like have to tell them that we were huge fans well I'm glad we got to tour together I know me too <laughs> but um we'll kind of just get get into the interview now where, like where are you at now where are you calling in from I'm in New York area how about you I'm in uh like Burbank Los Angeles oh nice mm. New York what if... area what does that mean does that mean like not New York City <laughs> I'm in New York City area so I'm in actually Hoboken New Jersey yeah 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 I know Hoboken yeah so I'm right over Hoboken the well. right over the water yeah, you can say you you're allowed to say New Jersey. There's no yeah. shame you're in your game. <laughs> yeah, you're familiar with the New Jersey game. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. my, one yeah. of my best friends lives in a. I'm gonna say Jersey City. Is that a thing? Yep, right next to us. Um. Yeah, yeah. New Jersey's a vibe. Easy yeah. to get into into Manhattan into into the West Side if you need to get over there. Yeah. Okay. And can you believe that people call it the armpit of America? Like that's just awful. They haven't met you. That's the problem. Thanks, Polly. That's what I tell everybody. <laughs> now you get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. So we're yeah. actually here today to talk about your new single, I Don't Deserve You. So oh. um, can you kind of just tell us the inspiration behind the single? Like how you kind of started writing it? All of that fun stuff. I started out writing a song with my good friend, Ariza, um, who you also know from love on tour I met Ariza before he was in the band and um, I knew him as an incredible songwriter and an artist in his own right and I connected with him as a producer we worked on Saucy together and Saucy was one of those songs that just came together in like 30 minutes like it was just too easy it was like this is just meant to be and when you work with someone and there's that level of ease you realize that there's like this sort of connection that you can't put words to it is magic it's just pure like poetry emotion so reconnecting with Ariza it was like okay let's do it again but like no expectation and let's just have fun at the core of it so I sat down ready to like get the creative juices going and then we just started catching up about life and it started bringing out all these emotions and I was like wow this is therapy I didn't realize that I needed this right now and we have this beautiful relationship where we've been around the world together now and we got to really like deep dive into some of the things that we've been going through and um like I got really vulnerable and was just like hey man like I get to this point sometimes where I just feel like I don't even deserve to be here mm -hmm. and it's it's all very like emo and like woe is me but it's that feeling of just not belonging and that's the one thing that makes us human the fact that we belong and that we have connection with each other so like in that moment, I was like, I need to just put pen to paper and try and get this message out. And it didn't start off as, I don't deserve you. It started off as, I don't deserve love. I don't deserve joy. I don't deserve happiness. And it was the personification of those things, which turns into you, the person. So you are love. You are happiness. You are joy. And I'm saying, I don't deserve you, but fully well knowing that I am a projection of those things. So if I am love, I am joy, I am happiness, then I do deserve those things. But it's just getting to that place where I can accept those things in my life. And to do that, I had to really go through that kind of dark space to to find the light. So yeah, yeah that's 
That's the long story. I hope you wasn't looking for a short story. No, I, I'm never as an interviewer looking for a short story. That's for sure. But I think like it's really awesome how I feel like a lot of people don't realize it. But with music, like obviously as a listener, it's therapeutic to hear like the relatability, but they don't realize on the other end for you, it's definitely really therapeutic to even write all of this out and kind of get it off your chest. You're so right. It was so cathartic to be able to express myself and to let go. And that's what art is for me. It's, it's an outward expression of self. And the second you're not doing that, it's like, it's just amusement. It's without thought. So I'm, I'm grateful to be able to create art that is meaningful and really heartfelt. Yeah, I completely agree. And like, you kind of already touch on it, but like when you're describing your song with a journey of self-reflection and self-doubt and vulnerability like how did you channel these emotions into your music and like what do you hope the listeners are taking away from that as they hear it I hope the listener can get to a point where they see themselves in me mm -hmm. um because I see myself in all of my listeners all my friends all my family all my fans like I see myself in them like even like the tour we just came from every time I look out into the audience I just see hundreds of thousands of people that are me and that sounds crazy because you're like wait there wasn't many black guys out there in the audience but Maya Angelou said this thing which was there's th that we are more alike than we are dissimilar and I think that is like case in point like we are so connected we are one people in Jamaica they have like my parents are Jamaican and they have the quote of the the land which is um out of many one people mm. and for me that's just a reminder that we are all the same like if you cut me I'll bleed the same blood as you and I want people to really feel the fact that we are in this together like if you hurt I hurt if I'm going through something I want you to go through it with me and collectively we can create an outcome that can better serve us as a community as a people as a generation so um, that's my hope for the listener to really connect with the music more than it just being an audio experience or wanting to be a life experience. Yeah, I completely agree on that. I think it's really like the most love and acceptance and everything you feel, I always say, is in a concert, like in a room where all of those people are there for the music and like the feelings and everything. Like you can feel it. Obviously, Love on Tour is a great example of that because everybody is just radiating so much joy and like positivity the entire time. It's such an experience. And I always encourage people to go if they're not even like fans, just to experience just like the unity that it brings also of a whole community. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well said. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like back to you more, um, you've had a diverse career as a musician and you've been a drummer, a DJ, you've kind of done it all. So how has that influenced your approach to like creating and producing music? And is there any genre that you say you like gravitate towards when you're writing or is it kind of just like, I want to do this and I'll do it? I love the fact that I'm not tied to one specific genre. Um, like before... My first EP was called The Idea of Tomorrow. I tried to mix these very different worlds, whether it was like alternative R&B um, and then into like a more sort of dancey track. Like I tried to just mix very different words, worlds. And then I had like a spoken word piece um, from Idris Elba. So mm -hmm. it was like almost theatrical. And I was like, okay, cool. I can create theatre through music, but then I can also create cinema through music and I had this uh, visual EP that was an accompaniment to the music. And I think that was the starting point for me of realizing that music doesn't need to be this linear thing that just has one way of being approached. It can have so many different directions and it can, it can, it can be a journey and it doesn't need to have a destination apart from just being on the journey. Like the journey truly is the destination for me when I'm making my music. Like following up from my first EP, I dropped two EPs called Secret Life of a Bad Man, Volume 1 and 2, which were again like very like more urban-esque, like alternative, but like hip-hop, R&B, soulful. 
But then on the flip of that, I released an album, which was an ambient record, like neoclassical and ambient music called The Secret. No, uh, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Mm -hmm. And that's like the total antithesis of what I was creating previously. Like I was talking to astronauts about their experience in space. Like that has nothing to do with what's going on in Edmonton, North London. Right. Like, so there's a two very different worlds. And I love the fact that I can live in both of these worlds simultaneously and there'd be no judgment. It's like, we are not people with one story. Like we have a multitude of stories and we live in a multiverse that allows us to exist in many dimensions. And I think that's, that's how I approach music and that's how like I traverse these different landscapes of sound and audio experiences um, and also just like being a fan of music like I love every genre yeah. like I'll, you'll see me at a jazz gig and you'll see me at a classical gig and then you'll see me rocking out at like at you know a rock show and then you might see me at like uh, an errors tour gig like I, I I go to I just love music so I'm down for the experience you see me in Vegas like with Paulie D your your homie from you know from Jersey oh, like yeah I saw him in Vegas that was he's a good DJ he's really good really you've yeah, seen he's him really good yeah, yeah like I love music and I love experiences and like I can't turn my nose up at any musical experience um in the same way that you encourage people who aren't fans to go to love on tour it's like I just encourage people to go and live <laughs> and if you yeah. happen to uh end up at <laughs> at Holy D in Vegas, <laughs> Jersey then. Club, like <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, yeah, I'm the yeah. same way with music too, especially with like this job right now. Obviously, like I get to go to so many different concerts and see different like artists and all that stuff. So it's really opened my eyes to a bunch of different genres that like I don't think I would have gone to otherwise. And so yeah, it's been it's always such a beautiful thing, and I think everybody needs to experience more music than just like the genre they pigeonhole themselves in sometimes. So it's good that you also experiment with all of that stuff and like see what you what you like and what's calling in the moment. I love that. Like who who do you know that just eats pizza every day? Like like that's that's not it. Tired of pizza. Like Yeah, like if like maybe you love Italian food. So maybe one day you'll have some pasta. Like but nice. you mix it up. And I think that's the magic of life and art like you have to mix it up like sometimes you have to try something you've never had before oh caviar today you know like I'm gonna try it I'm gonna try it you know and I think that's that's me like I love just trying new things and experimenting like it's it's all art to me it's all life is about experimenting and it's about experiencing doing those things I think bring you closer to God and I think self and I think that's yeah. A big thing for me so who would you say like some of the artists that inspired you when you were like starting out and growing up like who did it for you my biggest musical inspiration is an artist called Sun Ra okay um Sun Ra is considered the first ever psychedelic artist but never took any psychedelics um Sun Ra um was uh he had like over a hundred albums um was never born so can never die there's no record of his birth um That's crazy. Like, yeah like just the most incredible interesting artist he, he coined this term and had a film called space is the place mm -hmm. and um yeah it was very much like at the forefront of the afrofuturism movement and um yeah, one of my biggest influences by far. Like, if you just Google Sun Ra, you'll be like, what is that? <laughs> gonna have to look him up after this and I'm gonna be like, Polly. <laughs> I'll watch, I'll look into him though. But Amazing. Um, you kind of touched on your debut album EP, The Idea of Tomorrow, which was released in 2016. Um, how was your style changed at all in terms of writing and creating? Like I know you jump around on genres, but when you go into writing, is it all the same for you? Like, or have you kind of gotten a process down? I think my process is being present. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really not sure what I'm doing 
when I start doing anything like I think the key is just doing I think if you think about it too much then it all just falls apart or it becomes formulaic it's like it's like the idea of flying it's like oh my, like if you jump out a window you're like like the second you think about it that's when you fall right um well I've never tried jumping out windows so I don't know but you know what I mean that's the idea in my mind of like how creation works like I'm not trying to get caught up in the thought Mm -hmm. of it trying to become it um but so yeah that's that's kind of my process my process is like like be one with the art I love that um, yeah and you returned to solo work also touched on this but by performing saucy and you did that at Wembley Stadium which is an iconic moment for an iconic venue what was that experience like shout out to Harry for letting me open for him Wembley night four greatest night to ever happen in live music history mm -hmm. in my humble opinion um I agree honestly was you there no but I saw I see all the clips of all of them I wish yeah. I were there it was so special what was that like it was just the best feeling in the world it was the moment when I realized this is what I want to be doing for the rest of my life I love that for you that's awesome yeah, I got off stage and I was like, wow, I'm living my dream. Like, this is scary. You know that thing where it's like, oh, one day I dream of, like, I was like, yeah. oh, okay, mission accomplished. Like, I'm here really we are. I'm, I'm here, like, and I've been here for a while. And not only that, like, I'm living in gratitude. I'm living so gratefully and so in so much thanks for... <sighs> for the opportunities and just for the being present and the being healthy and the being able to do what I was doing in that moment. And yeah, I'm just keeping that energy with me now and every day. So it's just a reminder of how good life can be. Right. Yeah, no, it's so, I get like the feeling of imposter syndrome with a lot of this. Like, it's so easy to be like, what's going on? Like, I never thought I'd actually get here and then you're here. So like to be able to take it in and like recognize it is also so important, I think. Yeah, I just felt like this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And I didn't want to get off that stage. I had like a 25 minute set. I was like, I saw the <laughs> clock counting down. It got to like 24 minutes. I was like, hmm. I'm not leaving. <laughs> One more song and it's three minutes. Hmm. I'm gonna do it anyway. Like it just, it just felt. I never felt so at home, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, shout out to H for making that happen. And so, as we've been speaking about Harry, um, how did you start working together? I know you're both like his percussionist and musical director. So, like, how did you set get set up with him and? Do you think you'll be working with him in the future or where is that going? Yeah, only time will tell. Um, yeah. So cheeky <laughs> about it. <laughs> um, but how did you two meet? And how like, did how did that get set, set up? I don't know if I've ever told the story of how we met. And I think I might keep that private. That's so fine. Yeah, I don't know if, I'm pretty sure I've never on record told the story of how we met. But, oh. um, but yeah, shout out to his team. Right. Connect with the dots. That's Those awesome. Who, if you know, you know. Um. Well, I'm sure I know. I'm super grateful that you guys are working together because you have gotten a chance to like connect with fans in such a personal way. Like, I feel like that doesn't happen a lot with like the bands of people that are touring and whatnot um like I've gone to a ton of concerts and like they don't really know acknowledge the guitarist or anything like the fans are really really involved with you and it, I think it's awesome yeah how did that happen that's so mad to me because I went to Taylor Swift show mm -hmm. was, and I was like searching for the people in the band I was like who's because there's a there's a guy who was killing it doing this he had a right. solo and I was like who is it and I found him and I was like oh, okay cool but it's just so interesting that yeah, like different fandoms connect with different artists and their bands in different ways. Mm -hmm. it, it felt I was I was really truly 
on it because I feel like it can go one of two ways. <laughs> um, like just being honest, like it could have definitely gone one of two ways. And um, my whole thing was I just need to approach this with like unlimited love. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like that is all I can do. Um, and my intention stepping into it was to project and to emit as much love as possible every single night on that stage and for that stage to be filled with love and for people in the audience to feel that same level of love and I'm grateful that people felt that and lived within that intention and um, yeah I think definitely mission accomplished in many ways um, so I'm grateful that people connected and and we're still on the journey together yes and hopefully we get to see much more of you on that stage together but what's next for you this year in terms of your music um what's next for me I'm playing a solo show in Mexico City exactly Mexico. um and I might drop this song called Handsome that people um, got to experience for the first time on my UK and European tour. And more shows, more shows coming soon. Love it. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying playing live and I think it's time to take the show to new territories, to new lands and to connect with more people. And also I wanna eat more ice cream. I don't think I've been eating enough ice cream recently. What's your favorite flavor? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> well, I love rum and raisin. Okay, okay. It's very like- I was not expecting that. Oh, it's, it's so bomb. <laughs> it is a good one. I also like a basic bitch vanilla. Like, I do too. I love a good vanilla bean. Yeah, yeah. Like a good, good high vanilla bean. Madagascar. Yeah. Kind of vibe. Yeah. All day. Vanilla. All day. Yeah. She's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, this is honestly the end of our interview and on a good note with ice cream. But I thank you so much for speaking with us. And this has been an amazing one. So I'm really glad we got to do this. And I hope we get to talk more in the future, too. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Thank you so much for taking the time. And maybe I'll see you at a Paulie D show in Vegas. <laughs> oh, you'll see me there. A hundred percent. I'll let you know when I'm there. Incredible. All right. All right. <laughs>